Hey there, everyone, and thanks for joining us yet again for another episode. On today's show, we're going to be taking a look at Double Dragon 2 for the Japanese Mega Drive, which, of course, was released exclusively in Japan by Palsoft back in 1991. The thing about this game is it's actually quite rare and commands some pretty high prices online, and is also more of a direct arcade conversion as opposed to the NES and, of course, the PC Engine versions, which decided to add quite a bit to the arcade original. You see, Double Dragon 2 on the Mega Drive was only released in Japan, and that kind of sucks, because we did get the first game and, of course, the third game. So it seems kind of odd that they just forgot to release the second one. I would blame that more so on the fact that the programming for the game isn't exactly what I would consider top-notch. There's quite a bit of slowdown here, and the graphics just aren't really up to par. The thing is, though, even with the game's faults, it's still pretty cool, because honestly, it is really the only arcade direct conversion of Double Dragon 2. There are still some differences between the Mega Drive version and the arcade, and those can primarily be found on the second mission, where a little bit was added and changed to make the level a bit more complex and overall just a little more difficult. The gameplay in the Mega Drive version is almost identical to that of its arcade brother. It uses a standard three-button setup on a Sega Genesis controller, and it works as follows. A would be your left-facing attack, B is jump, and then of course C would be your right-facing attack. All of the different moves, and of course the special moves as well, are accounted for here in the Sega Genesis version, and as far as the controls go, it does feel pretty smooth. The main issue, really, with this port of Double Dragon 2 is just that it really slows down hard in a lot of instances, to a point where it becomes really difficult to play. It's kind of funny in a sense, though, because if you remember, both the arcade versions of 1 and 2 also suffer from slowdown, so one could say that it does make it arcade accurate. In the graphics department, Double Dragon 2 on the Mega Drive is quite a bit of a letdown. The character sprites and the bosses are noticeably smaller than that of the arcade version, and the stages just seem like they're missing something. There just seems to really be no texturing going on with a lot of these stages and backgrounds, and it makes the game look really flat and just very boring overall. Even with that said, it still does look like Double Dragon 2, just not really what I would expect from the Mega Drive and or the Sega Genesis. Luckily, in this iteration of Double Dragon 2, we do have two-player co-op gameplay, and that's always nice. The good news is, is that even with two players, it's not really like the slowdown is any worse than it normally is with just one player, so I guess I would consider that a positive. The sound in this version of Double Dragon 2 is where it really starts to get mixed for me. The sound effects and the voices are really terrible, to be honest. The sound effects for punching and kicking don't even sound like punching and kicking sounds, and the voices are really grainy and rough sounding. At the same time, though, the music in the Sega Mega Drive version of Double Dragon 2 is absolutely fantastic, and may have some of the absolute best versions of all of the classic Double Dragon 2 themes. So, to wrap it up, Double Dragon 2 on the Mega Drive is still an awesome game because, simply, it's still Double Dragon 2. It's just a big letdown as far as the Genesis is concerned, or the Mega Drive for that matter. I just feel like it could have been so much more, and while I do respect the fact that it is a direct arcade port and that is what kind of adds to its charm, it's just not a really great one, and I can't help but feel like the Mega Drive could have done a much better job with a different set of developers. And for its price, even though it does play well and it's still a lot of fun, it's really hard to justify dropping the money to pick it up. I think I paid about 80 bucks for this copy, and I only really decided to pay that just simply because I'm a huge fan of the series and I've always wanted to own this particular version of the game. 
Now, I love it, and again, I'm able to justify that, but at the same time, if you're just a casual fan of Double Dragon or are looking for some good Genesis games or Mega Drive games to pick up for your system, I can't wholeheartedly recommend this one. If you do, in fact, decide to grab a copy of Double Dragon 2, though, there are a couple of different ways that you can play it on an American system. What I'm doing here for this review, as far as this footage is concerned, is actually just filming it while playing it on an American Genesis 1 with a Game Genie right underneath the cartridge. Just skipping the menu will allow you to boot right into the game normally with no problem. Another option is just to use a Sega Genesis 3, which requires no Game Genie in order for it to run Mega Drive games. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and until next time, stay classic.